This is going to be part two of how Hollywood copies the Bible, but we are going to look at how the devil uses Hollywood to get into your home. There are so many videos out there about how wicked Hollywood and the entertainment industry is, but rarely do they give verses about why the movies or TV shows or video games are actually wicked. Those videos mostly aren't Bible based, but are done just to get views and exposure for their ministry. They are nothing but clickbait. And yeah, you want to get a lot of people to see your ministry, but you don't want to compromise the message. So this is going to be a sincere look at Hollywood and how it is being used to destroy the minds of you and your children. I'm not going to just give facts, but give Bible verses to back up what I'm saying. If you don't use the Bible, then what is the point? Everything revolves around the Bible. Everything is turning out just like the Bible said it would. And when I say Bible, I mean a authorized King James 1611 Bible. Because all the other versions of the Bible are more satanic counterfeits. And that's because everything God has, the devil has a counterfeit for it. The devil counterfeits the stories of the Bible with Hollywood movies. Let's look at what the Bible says about Satan. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Luke 22.31 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So from these verses we can see Satan is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour, and he wants to sift you as wheat. He will come in such a way that will deceive, and he appears to you and your children as an angel of light. We are going to start off by looking at the new movie, Beauty and the Beast, which is coming out soon, and it is about a woman who falls in love with a beast. Did you know the female character in the movie and the beast would have both been put to death under, under the Old Testament law? Leviticus 20 and verse 15 says, And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. You say, well, that's crazy. You are just some Bible-thumping fanatic. But aren't you the one that is a little strange in this situation? You are the one watching a movie and also letting your kids watch a movie that has a woman kissing a beast, kissing an animal. This would be bestiality, and God said that is an abomination. Disney loves to push these weird, satanic, sexual movies. Why do you think they wanted to put a lesbian character in one of their movies? And Disney shoves this stuff into the face of your kids as soon as they are born. Just the name of the movie should turn parents off from letting their kids watch it. And this movie kind of reminds you of the woman in Revelation who rides a beast. Revelation 17 and verse 3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The beast, being the Antichrist, has a bad right eye, as it says in Zechariah eleven seventeen. And isn't it strange how the movie poster shows a horned beast with a darkened eye? That is a very weird thing. You say, why do you talk so much about the Antichrist? Well, that's because the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mystery of iniquity is the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is already working, even though the Antichrist hasn't stepped on the scene. If you don't teach the mysteries in the Bible on a regular basis, then a false doctrine will rise up in its place. And if you don't preach and teach against the wicked Antichrist spirit of Hollywood, then every house will continue to watch the movies. Satan uses movies like Beauty and the Beast to blur the line between good and evil and between righteous and perverted. He appears as an angel of light, so he makes things look innocent. 
What about Finding Dory? The movie Finding Nemo and Finding Dory aren't very original. And once again, you have Satan creeping into your houses with m movies that have professing lesbians doing the voice of the main character. Romans one twenty six calls homosexuality a vile affection. God made a man and a woman, but Disney loves to push man with man or woman with woman or man with beast. Even the plot of Finding Nemo can be found in the Bible. Jesus says in Mark one seventeen, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. If you are a born-again Christian, then your job is to be a fisher of men. You go out fishing for souls. You're supposed to be fishing to get souls for Jesus Christ by giving them the gospel. We are called fishers of men because we are underwater. Psalms 148.4 says, Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Notice it said waters above the heavens in the plural. The Bible talks about three heavens. Our atmosphere being the first heaven, with outer space being the second heaven. So somewhere up above the second heaven, you have a body of water that would make the oceans of this world look like a drop in a bucket. Revelation 4.6 refers to it as a sea of glass, while Job calls it a molten looking glass. Psalms 18.16 says, He sent from above, He took me, He drew me out of many waters. God is fishing us out, and when, when He loses one of His children, He goes to find them. Luke 15.4 says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it. There is no new thing under the sun. Speaking of this sea of glass, this is what Corinthians says. 1 Corinthians 13.12 But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. If you were to go straight up through this sea of glass, it would take you to what you would call another world, a world with creatures that would look strange to your eyes like cherubim. And have you ever heard of Alice in Wonderland? where a girl goes through a glass mirror. And now they are putting out a new one called Alice Through the Looking Glass. You see, there is no new thing under the sun. At the rapture, we will go straight up through the sea of glass and enter into what most people would refer to as a fantasy land. There is no new thing under the sun, and Hollywood can't get away from the Bible because the one who writes these movies is obsessed with destroying the Bible. You do know that the Bible talks about men who are led by Satan, who creep into houses unawares. Second Timothy 3, 6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Then you have these movies like Ghostbusters that have monstrous creatures who come out and take over a city, kind of reminds you of Revelation 9 where you have devilish locusts that come up out of a bottomless pit and wreak havoc on men for five months. Revelation 9, 5 says, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. The Ghostbusters movie also contributes to the false idea that dead people roam around on earth after death, which they don't. They either go to hell, like the rich man in Luke 16, or to the third heaven to be with God, because if you are absent from the body, you are present with the Lord, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.8. But what about the Purge movies? They seem to be coming out with one of these every year now. Did you know the Bible says the time of Jacob's trouble 
will be the worst time the world has ever seen with people killing just because they are wicked. Jesus says in Matthew twenty four twelve, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There is only love for self nowadays. And imagine being in the tribulation where there will be a real life purge. That movie will probably come to life during the tribulation with people killing just to be killing. And now they are remaking the movie Peach Dragon with a dragon that befriends a young boy. Don't you know the Bible speaks of a dragon that appears to you as a friend because the Bible says he appears as an angel of light? Revelation 12, 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen says, And no marvel, for Satan himself was transformed into an angel of light. Notice how these movies love to include small children as main characters with them befriending something that is devilish. They are putting out a movie now about a boy who befriends a walking, talking tree. And it even calls the movie A Monster Calls. A boy seeks help from this monster tree to cope with his life. And there is a story about Je Jesus... There is a story about Jesus healing a blind man in Mark 8.23. It says, And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit in his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. You see, there's no new thing under the sun. Everything in Hollywood can be found in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, the Bible also talks about people worshipping idols under every green tree. Deuteronomy 12.2 says, Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. 1 Kings 14.23 for they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. So even back then they were worshipping false gods in the high places. And notice the verse said groves. Have you ever heard of Bohemian Grove? There is no new thing under the sun. Second Kings 16.4 says, And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Second Chronicles 28.4 He sacrificed also, and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Isaiah 57.5 Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Did you know in devil worship all throughout time, there has been the sacrifice of children to false gods? And don't think for one second that this world has gotten any better and that they aren't still doing that today. And then Jeremiah 2.20 says, For of old time I have broken thy yoke, and burst thy bands, and thou saidest I will not transgress, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, Playing the harlot. Jeremiah 3 6 says, The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And paganism many times involves the worship of nature. Signs of a nation falling as that nation starts to love mother nature instead of setting their affection on new jerusalem which is the mother of us all as paul says and the conjuring movies are nothing new either the bible talks about people being attacked by unclean spirits 
Acts 19, 13 through 16 says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And even King Saul was troubled by evil spirits. First Samuel 16.14 says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So the Conjuring movies are nothing new. And Wicked Disney is coming out with a movie called The BFG, which stands for The Big Friendly Giant. And everyone knows giant movies are unoriginal and played out. And the Bible talks about giants tons of times in the Old Testament. And only Satan would want you to think they are friendly. They are one of the reasons God destroyed the earth with a flood. Genesis 6-4 says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And these giants were one of the reasons the world became wicked, and why God destroyed the earth with a flood in the days of Noah. And Jesus says in Matthew 24 that the end times will be as it was in the days of Noah. And violent movies are getting into the minds of your kids and making them think that blood and gore is something to be used for entertainment. Millions of kids everywhere will see the movie Suicide Squad and the name itself should turn off parents from letting their kids see it. But parents don't care, care to let their kids watch rated R movies. The characters look like modern versions of the Maniac of Gadara. The movie is about the government assembling the world's supervillains together for the purpose of annihilating an enemy. And this kind of reminds me of what the Bible says about the Battle of Armageddon. All the villains of this world, the armies led by Satan, will gather themselves together to battle their enemy, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 19, 19 says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And enemies will always come together to go against Jesus Christ. Even when Jesus was here the first time, Luke twenty three twelve says, And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. So people will come together to go against the Lord Jesus Christ. And people are so in love with this world and the things that it has to offer. And you probably wonder why I speak so much against the entertainment industry. It is because that is what 95% of people are in love with. They want to be entertained and they are being demoralized and desensitized. Satan is blurring the lines between good and evil. People are calling evil good and good evil. Even Christians are falling right into Satan's trap. He knows a lot of them won't go out and murder people and commit adultery. But he also knows he can get them to watch people do those things in their home on a TV screen, and they will take pleasure in watching people sin. Christians think they are okay as long as they meet at a building every Sunday, but then throughout the week they think they can forget about the Bible and that they can forget about God and fill their head with the things of this world. And Paul calls this place a present evil world in Galatians 1.4. I wonder what he would think if he saw this world in 2016. What if he saw the previews of these movies that I showed you? He would say something worse than just a present evil world. The truth is that 
All that matters is the Lord Jesus Christ, and He is coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. You will either be on His side at His coming, or on Satan's side. It is your choice, and if you refuse to choose, you automatically take the devil's side. If you're not saved, then the best thing you can do is believe the gospel. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, God in the flesh, died on the cross as a sinless sacrifice to pay for your sin debt. He was buried and rose again the third day. He did this for us, even though we were sinners. And Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 3, 9, What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Galatians 3.22 But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Romans 3.10-11 says, As it is written, There is none righteous, no not one, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. We can only get righteousness by placing our faith on Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22-23 through 23 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To be saved and get e eternal life and go to heaven, you come to God as a guilty sinner and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The Bible is plain on how to be saved, and it's plain on how to get eternal life and go to heaven. Acts 